Hello, everyone, and welcome to the State of the Market, where we cover a market in hopefully five minutes or less. Return a guest, I mean absolute champion of this video series, Ryan Hodgnowski. He is a market reporter. He covers not just pork, but also lamb and veal. And today, he's going to be talking to us about elevated pork trim prices. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate it. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about some seasonally elevated pork trim prices. Now, if you're familiar with pork, and uh, you would know, in the beginning of November, we would almost every other year be talking about prices going down and uh, usually coming off kind of considerably here from summer into winter, but we're not seeing that this year. Let me share my screen real quick and show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. All right, so... What we're looking at is some earner berry price charts. What we're going to look at first is 42% lean trim. As you can see, this red line, these are weekly prices. This dates back to 1981, as you can see all the lines on this chart. Look where we're at this year, right? Over the last few weeks and into early November now. So that's 42s, right? You got your 72s, which are seeing very similar. They're very elevated. And you're seeing boneless picnics trending a tiny bit downward here but again look at where we're at versus previous years now the demand side of the story is pretty simple while retail demand has been so so for a lot of pork items food service interest has been active recently and going back over the last few months here so a lot of food service demand has helped propel these prices upward but food service you know, demand is not going to on its own create weekly all time highs, especially to the levels that we're talking about. So let's take a look at the supply side of the equation here. So what we have is uh, pork production. So this is USDA federally inspected pork production. This red line, again, like the previous chart is this year. And as you can see, it's trended a little bit under most recent years. Now, if you were going to say just versus last year, you're you're not talking a whole lot less, but definitely less. You're talking about roughly 0.2, 0.3% less pork production. But when we're talking about, you know, many millions of pounds, it, it, it it's a good bit lower and you have less product out there. So it's a little bit tighter. Now, something we don't talk about a whole lot with pork trim exports, um, but that's something I'm going to cover here. So this is U.S. total pork exports to Mexico. As you can see, each month so far this year has been a monthly all-time high. Now, again, if you're familiar with pork, you know a lot of that is bone in hands due to the HPAI situation. But a good bit of it recently has been pork trim as well. So this is the U.S. Ex exports, and like I said, some trim is going there as well. But a lot of the story comes from Canada, too, where Canada would typically be exporting a lot of their trim to the U.S., um, and typically we see pretty competitive prices versus our domestic pricing, right? You see pretty good values in Canadian trim. Some of that is due to um, U.S. operations not all being able to use, you know, Canadian trim. But nonetheless, you would typically see that. But we're not seeing that right now. We're seeing Canadian trim prices as fairly elevated. And a lot of talk recently has been that Mexico has had very strong demand from, for trim, not just from the U.S., but from Canada as well. So you have less Canadian trim coming in. You have more trim from the U.S. going to Mexico, and you end up with a tight supply, and you have relatively elevated levels. Now, the story with Mexico is fairly interesting here because a lot of that trim could be used to feed residents and citizens and whatnot. But what's interesting, too, is Mexico's export business has been growing as the years have went on. So I want to pull up this little chart, which is fairly Fairly interesting here. This is um, Mexican pork exports. Now, this would be finished material, so it's not going to be raw material. But as you can see, over the years, they have really increased their export business. So buying a lot of pork trim is not all that unexpected here. Like I said, whether it's to feed their own citizens or convert the product into end uh, or convert the material, I should say, into end product and then shipping it out, you know, as any normal business would. So it's really interesting what's happening with pork trim in the U.S. And a lot of it has to do with what's going on internationally. So I'm glad that you uh, that you brought up a couple of points here that we don't talk about too often on here. I love talking about the import export side of things because it really helps us understand the supply situation. A lot of people focus primarily just on that price, but that qualitative information that you're providing here is invaluable when you're trying to understand where things are going in the future. So this is super, super helpful. And I would imagine that after watching this quick snip, which by the way, thank you for that under five minute state of the market. Um, how should people reach out to you if they would like to talk to you, not only about the pricing side of things, but also about some of this great research that you're doing to understand why these prices are where they are? 
Yeah, so the easiest way to reach out to me is uh, directly through my email, vrhodgnowski, that's H-O-J-N-O-W-S-K-I, at earnerberry.com. And uh, you could set up a call with me if you ever wanted to. Uh, you could email me, however you prefer to communicate. Um, anyway, it's perfectly fine with me. Awesome. Well, Ryan, you have been an absolute shining star on the State of the Market series. I really appreciate your time. And for all of you watching, thank you so much for joining. I'm Laura Zinger, host of the Market Digest podcast and director of sales. With me is Ryan Hodgnowski, superstar of Pork, Lamb, Veal, and the State of the Market. Thank you for watching.